Hello everyone, today we're going to be playing New Super Mario Bros. in an entirely different way and hopefully you've been enjoying the DS videos that I posted over the last week. We're also going to find out the answer to the age old question, is the cake really a lie? And those of you who played Portal 1 and 2 will know exactly what I'm referring to. Now I also love that uh, they're still producing and manufacturing, of course, uh, 2D Mario games. I like that they have them on the Wii, the Wii U, 3DS, and even on mobile phones now. Very, very cool stuff here. And I actually uh, bypassed getting the Wii U entirely. There were two games I wanted on the system, uh, one of which was Super Mario Maker, and of course the other one was NES Remix. But uh, when they put them on the 3DS, I was escaped the wrath of uh, even buying a uh, Wii U. One of my friends bought the system over, and I really didn't enjoy the D-pad for it or the interface whatsoever. I'm going to be going from the evolutionary step from the Wii directly to the Nintendo Switch when they have a new Metroid Prime come out. But uh, let's get this show on the road here. We're going to be playing this in an entirely different way. We're going to do it Groundhog Day style. You'll see what I mean in a moment. There's this one really, really cool moment, the very first time I play this, and uh, you're going to see it in a few moments here. Most of you should know what I'm talking about by now. Right there, that magical, magical block. I'm going to push the home button, and let's see what happens here. We're back on the uh, user interface. I'm going to push down on my controller. And I'm going to save a suspense state. How am I doing this? The answer is because I am really running full speed DS on the NES and SNES classics. It was not a fake video. It was just done in a very special way because there were two audiences uh, to account for. And I'm going to go over this throughout the rest of the video. But I'm going to load the save state right now. And there we go. Let's get this magical block. Love this stuff. Yes, this video is going to be a slash tutorial overview of how to run full speed DS on your mini classics. But I have this amazing suspense state now, and uh, I can load up this big mushroom anytime I feel like uh, destroying stuff. But we're going to go back to the home menu. I'm going to push the uh, home button again. And I'm going to go over the nuances of how you're going to have to handle DS on your mini now. Because Desmoom and, of course, uh, Melon are not full speed ahead, but the one that we're going to be running is. I'm going to load another uh, save state right now. We'll do it for another game. Oh, we'll try it for uh, Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift. Clever name there. Let's load up this save state. Lo and behold, the save state works, and we're on the very first battle, which doubles as a tutorial, and we're going to be taking on Cuesta for a moment here. And I'm a big, big, tremendous fan of uh, turn-based strategy games. I wasn't always this way, but one of the very first ones I ever played was, of course, Military Madness on the original Turbo Graphics 16. Then I moved on to such great ones as uh, Shining Force 2 on Sega Genesis, and finally stuff like Command & Conquer later on. But uh, we'll get a couple hits on Cluster, and then we'll move on to the rest of this video. But enough people have asked me about this game in particular to uh, warrant me uh, showcasing this in the final reveal video. And tremendous score here, like any typical Square Enix or Final Fantasy game for that matter would have. Okay, let's get a couple hits here. And I have to say, this is actually an incredible entry in the Final Fantasy Tactics Legacy. Move a little bit closer and get a good uh, fire hit here. Okay, cool. Now we'll do one more hit and then we'll move on to the next game. Where's my ninja? I need a ninja in this game. Okay, round two, fight hit. Success. And we're gonna do something a little bit different now. I'm uh, gonna tap the home button again. 
And I'm going to change out the uh, suspense state with another one. Now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and show you exactly how this emulator works. Once I make this uh, suspense state here. There we go. And we're good to go. So I'm going to pick another game right now. Uh, we'll do uh, Dragon Quest Nine: Sentinels of the Starry Skies. Tremendous series. Load the suspense state here. Again, this is going to be less of a showcase of Nintendo DS games in action and more so about the nuances of adjusting to this new and incredible emulator. Yes, I said emulator. It is not a core. It is actually an emulator. And I'm going to go over that in the next few moments. But uh, here we have Dragon Quest IX, also known as Dragon Warrior. Tremendous series right up there with the likes of Final Fantasy and Fantasy Star series. But very, very cool game. Well worth checking out any of the Dragon Quest games on Nintendo DS for that matter. But in my last little demonstration of New Super Mario Brothers, uh, you can hold down the home button, your down select shortcut, and or the reset button on your mini for a very, very quick duration, and you'll exit back to the main user interface and be able to create a suspend state. If you hold down any of these three for longer than a second, like I'm going to do right now, I'm going to hold down my home button for a couple seconds, then I'm going to release. It's going into the drastic menu, and we uh, did a lot of tests and everything set up so you can pretty much use controllers from the get-go, but you also have this very, very nifty thing if you go into control uh, configuration here, where you can actually use two controllers for the same uh, configuration. So if you have, uh, say for instance, if I go down here where it says touch cursor up, down, left, and right, I could actually take a right analog on my second controller and map them right to these right here. And then I could take like my L2 button and have it mapped as the touch cursor press. The README will have all the defaults, and uh, that's pretty much what it is. But we have uh, extra controls as well, which you're not going to have to worry about as much. Uh, these are pretty much mostly unnecessary. The main things you're going to have to really worry about will be what I just showed you. And I'm going to exit without saving, but you can also do it uh, where you save for all games. And you can also go to change options. Some of these options you may want to play around with. We have the ability to enable cheats. I would leave this off by default, just uh, test it out with the game, and uh, some games will actually freeze or not load at all if you have enabled cheats enabled. High resolution 3D, it works for some games, but uh, not a whole lot of them. I mean, for the most part, the standard settings that we tested out work the best. And of course, up here where it says frame skip uh, type, it is best left to none for default. If you put it to uh, automatic and start putting it up, you're going to have performance issues. But uh, you could get away with automatic and one on some games. But for the most part, 95% uh, of games that I've run have been absolutely perfect with none right there. And then uh, I'm going to exit without saving right here. Exit drastic. And it's just going to go back to the home menu again. Now I'm going to load up uh, Metroid Prime Hunters real quick and show you something else briefly. And again, I don't have my save state because I need to actually be in-game and tap my shortcut. Either down select, the home button on my controller, and or the reset button on the mini for a quick duration. Then it'll exit back to the home user interface and give me a shortcut for a uh, suspend state. But I'm going to load up Metroid Prime Hunters right now. And I'm going to go brevity as far as the controls are concerned here. And uh, two things you're not going to be able to do for right now. There are games that require swipe control, such as Metroid Prime Hunters, when you have to do your burst with your morph ball. And of course, Castlevania Dinosaur, when you have to do the Okami draw and stack controls. We do not have the speed to be able to do the swipe controls as of yet, but we will work on trying to get it uh, to register in the future. But I have my right analog for right now. This is how I did it for my own uh, preference. I have it where I could use the right analog to move the cursor around. And I have the L2 to do the touch screen. I'm going to start this game for a brief moment here. Again, you'll see the custom uh, default ones all set up in the readme file, of course, and in the release notes. I'm going to start the game out real quick. And the other thing we're not going to be able to do is obviously play games like Nintendo because uh, there's obviously no microphone interface. But we're going to try to work on getting things fixed up as far as uh, playing games like Metroid Prime Hunters and Castlevania Down of Sorrow. Either using a bypass workaround with save states that I will post and share within the course that release. And we're fixing up the setup for the next release or two. So that we can actually do uh, 
pre-rendered or pre-registered uh, swipe uh, configurations, maybe up, down, left, or right and such. But uh, I'm using my right analog. That's how I have it set up for right now again. By default, it will be on the left analog. And then I'm gonna hold down the touch screen once I'm on here. Now I can actually do my camera controls and then use my D-pad to move around. And then of course my L1 to shoot. So this is just my own custom setup right now. But I'm gonna tap the home button really quick. And then I'm gonna get my suspend state. But beautiful, beautiful emulator. I mean, courtesy of the work of Exo Phase and several other people who worked on Drastic in the past. And uh, Mad Monkey, Dan the Man827, and myself all worked on the performance, optimization, and execution of this on a Mini Classics, and it worked out tremendously well. I mean, it's one of the very, very best chords that we could possibly have. Here uh, we have uh, Kingdom Hearts 358, two days. I'll load that for a second, uh, verify this is Penn State loads. And actually I did this one intentionally. This is an abnormally large game at 256 megabytes, uncompressed. The suspend states will not work at this uh, size at all. You cannot do any of the save states whatsoever, but in-game saves work just fine. Just remember that. So again, anything that's 128 megabytes or less, you should have no issues with. But anything that gets over 128 megabytes, you're going to start having issues the higher up it gets, especially at 256 megabytes. But uh, Dragon Quest 9, which is actually 128 megabytes, I did suspend states and save states on just fine. And the other recommendation, I'm going to move over to the PC in a moment here. Uh, I'll do one more quick test here. Before we move over to the PC, we're going to check out Final Fantasy 3. I love this remake, and many of you might not be aware of the fact that the very first incarnation of a remake, or kind of a remaster of the Final Fantasy games, was actually on the Wonder Swan color. Then were some tremendously awesome remakes of Final Fantasy 1 and 2. And then were the real 1 and 2. I mean, you know how 2 ended up being a different one in Japan than it was in the United States because of it not being released over here. And then, of course, we had High Lake Fantasy on uh, TurboGrafx CD, which was actually the engine from uh, the Final Fantasy games on Wonder Swan Color. But uh, let's check this out for a second here. And then we're going to move over to the PC. I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to be installing. But the rest of this, you're going to be able to get the graphs and uh, gist of as far as the release notes are concerned. And of course, I will do another DS Stravaganza video to showcase more of these in action. And again, it starts out with a battle. Very, very cool. I love the games where you don't have to go through a town and talk to everybody. You start out right with a battle. Very cool. And there has been one other game that many, many people have been asking about. So I guess I'm going to have to load it up for a quick second. Just to show you guys and gals how well it works. But Final Fantasy 3 works fantastically well here. And I'm going to create a suspense state because it again is uh, not over 128 megabytes. So I'm going to be fine on this one. And for my testing, in-game saves work just fine. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to tap the home button very, very quick. Again, you can do down select, home button, or reset. And there's another map in that I'm going to mention too. If you play a game like uh, Phantom Hourglass, the Zelda game, the actual power button on the mini is mapped to the close hinge button. You need to use that for a puzzle. It will not power your system down. It'll just uh, pretty much put your DS into sleep mode. And then you can use it for the puzzle. But uh, the other game that people have been asking about, and I'll do this as the very, very uh, last example today before I get over to the PC. We're going to do Pokemon Heart Goad, and I'm going to go right into uh, the suspense state I created. This should most certainly make you Poke Freaks and Pokemaniacs and Pokemon Fanatics very, very happy. Nearly all 20 of the games work incredibly fine on the mini for my testing. And I'll be showcasing some of these in the DS Drive Against videos in the future. I'm right at the point where I get to pick my Pokemon for the first time. I'm going to show you a different way to do save states as well for the games that support them. Again, if you hold down the down select shortcut as well as uh, the home button and or the reset button on your mini for a very, very quick duration, you're quick back to the home user interface and be able to create a suspend state. But uh, watch what happens here if I actually do the longer depress of the button. I'm going to hold down my home button for a couple seconds. And then I'm going to release. And then I have the option right here to actually save it right here. So I can do it via the emulator interface as well as doing it from the home menu on the mini itself. Now I'm going to resume. 
Now we'll get to the next section. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, hold it down for a couple seconds and see if I'm able to load that save state. Load save state. There we go, it loaded just fine. Good to go. Then I can quit the game normally with the quick depress of the button. And then I can create a suspend state. So you can actually have it saved uh, twice if you need to, just to be on the safe side. Uh, we're going to do one more quick one because I need to blow stuff up for a moment here. I'm going to do uh, Bangyo, a great treasure game. Okay, we are on the final portion of the video. I'm opening up Hashi CE 3.50, the one that I'm using right now. I'm going into modules, install, extra modules. And this is after I download the set and extract it to the user mods folder. Again, uh, you would just go into your CE directory. I'll go to mine right now. User mods. I just copy the entire core set right into user mods, just like so. Now go to modules, install extra modules. We have the add-ons, the cheats. And by the way, I just added Final Burn Alpha cheats. You can run them with uh, Final Burn Alpha 2012, 2016, and 2018. I'll add more games in the future, but yes, I added a bunch of those. I tested out a Street Fighter 3, the arcade version with Infinity Health, and it worked incredibly well. The main core set right here. The Retroarchs. Then you have the various things for like uh, Hashi uh, SD Prep. And here we go, right here under the Special tab is the Drastic Emulator with all the README that you have to account for. It has all the control mapping all accounted for. So make sure you actually take a couple moments to read this entire README. It'll actually explain a lot, but that's the main thing right there, the gist of it all. And then once the update is uh, posted, you're going to be able to go into modules, KMFD Mod Hub, and you're also going to be able to find a tab on there as well, a special tab. It's not on there yet, but it'll be on there under a special tab. The last thing I'm re going to recommend is uh, go into settings and have compressed games when added and disabled when you add the DS games. And I'm going to go to the last ones that I just added. And I added these uh, with compression off. Again, this is 256 megabytes. This is a game that is not going to work with suspense states and such. Here we have uh, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. 128 megabytes. That is actually going to work with the suspense states and save states. But uh, do not compress it. If it's 128 megabytes and up, if you try compressing it, you have a chance of it not loading at all. But in any case, I thoroughly hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be doing another NES uh drastic video very very soon and uh hopefully you'll really enjoy the update and again thanks to mad monkey and danaman 827 and exophase and the original developers of drastic